Hey! Okay. Officially. Now it's officially Man Cracking at Midnight featuring Brian Bastard. And yes, Care can hear us. Therefore, oh, we, are, we are audible. We're, we're good. We're Welcome, everybody, to the show. We already kind of set it up, but in case you're just joining us now, which you're probably not, uh, we're going to talk about. Um, it's a theme night. We, 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 we discuss what we want to talk about in terms of the theme of things we like and things that we think are the best. We're just going to gush to you. Just some we know our opinions matter to you. Yeah, and I think that we should keep in mind that this is a loose schedule. Uh, we can obviously get off topic during any of them. One, mashed potatoes. One, mashed potatoes. We're the best kind of mashed potatoes. I... <laughs> Really enjoy mashed potatoes, garlic cheddar mashed potatoes with lots of cream and butter. That's my favorite <laughs> mashed potatoes. <laughs> this is the best we can come up with. It's not bad. Um, skins in or out, Sam? Skins in. Good. Skins in. Good call. I'll take some Yukon Gold. I'll take those big fat potatoes. I'll take some red potatoes. I don't even care. Skins in. Cream. Four heads of garlic. Ten pounds of cheddar. Um, how thick? Versus how clean, how dry. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it dry so that it'll it'll definitely crack a little bit. You know, it'll definitely come apart a little bit rather than just goop and yeah. go like that. Yeah. But I don't like it so hard that it's like a like a dry bowl of oatmeal. I don't want like that. Yeah. You know, my girlfriend, um, when she was a little kid, she used to say that she wouldn't eat mashed potatoes because they were too soft, and she doesn't know what little kid version of her was talking about. She thinks maybe she meant too dry. She was very weird to say, I don't know what I want. Um, I'm yeah, sorry. I throw that in there. I just read the... Anyway. Weird. It demands entertainment. No, that's not, that's not what I'm reading. Oh. What, what do you mean read that one? Oh, yeah. Anyway, oh. interesting. Um, so, number three. This, the next favorite, this is going to be the worst show ever. We'll keep, let's, whatever. Let's rush through these. We'll next, up something. period films. What's our favorite period film? Brian, what's your favorite period film? Uh, American Graffiti. Okay. All right. Hands down. One of my favorite movies ever, of any movie. It's pretty good. And it's period. I think mine might be, oh, Master and Commander is good person in the studio, wherever you are, why you didn't call out your name, or that you were here when I called, if anybody was here, I don't know why. In any case, Master and Commander, I actually just watched that last two weeks ago, and man, that is a really awesome movie, I love that movie, but no, I think my favorite might be Last of the Mohicans. Ooh, oh. Good. It's just such a good movie. I oh. love that movie. Does Caveman, <laughs> starring Ringo Starr, count as a period pit film? Yes. Okay. That might be sad. <laughs> That's not bad. If I have to, I can also go forward in time and do something like Blade Runner as a period piece. Because it's a period piece and it's an awesome film. Okay. Okay. Hold on a second. If if Caveman counts as a period film and Blade Runner counts as a period film, does and Star Wars counts as a period film you. takes takes place specifically in a long time ago when it got too far far away. Conan the Destroyer takes place specifically and illicitly in the time between the days when the ocean swallowed Atlantis and the rise yeah. of the sons of Arius. So we can count that as a period. Yeah, it's true. We can count that as a period piece. Also, Sinbad, uh, what's the one where he's on the boat? That's all of them, right? Which, I'm sorry, which is the one where they go into the cave? That's all of them, too. Which, wait, are we talking Harry Nelson Sinbad's? Or... Yeah. I think you probably think Golden Voyage. That's I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the sin no. Yeah, that's the one with the centaur. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. That's a, another period piece. What else is a period? No. Uh, moving on. Top five, same with the uh, visual media 
top five shows from before 2000. Oh, this is actually going to be a hard one. I think we should combine into a double five. Well, I got, I got my. Oh, you got your. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I think I'd go Mr. Science Theater 3000. One. Ooh. Space goes coast to coast. Two. Um. Uh, late night with Colin O'Brien. Three. Johnny Quest. Oh. Four. And um. You gotta go with Saturday Night Live. Changed comedy, man. Yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit more serious. I'm gonna keep the Johnny Quest in there. I might not in any particular order, because that's just too hard. But I'm gonna keep the Johnny Quest in there. So I'm gonna throw in the original Law and Order with Lenny Briscoe and Sam Washington all that. Uh, I'm gonna throw Sesame Street in there. Good one. Because it's I just it's just what it's just such a good show. Sesame Street. Uh uh, yeah, Charlie and Lena are probably really good. Um, Change the late night, man. We're changing late night right now, though. Seinfeld. Oh. Uh, mm, uh, and, uh, mm, uh, uh, X-Men. 1983. Two? 993 animated yeah. series? Yep, animated X-Men. I hope that's your computer fucking. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. We're fine. Uh, Apparently Zia, sorry Zia, he can't heart us well, heat us well. Everybody loves Raymond. No, heart us well? You can't heart us Zia? I heart you Zia. Alright, moving on. Least favorite writing implement. Oh man, there's a lot that I hate. It's a really hard one because there are so many that are terrible. But the least favorite? I really don't like charcoal. The only, I like charcoal. It feels very <laughs> Oh man. Chelsea Maida, today in the school store, let me use this pen that she had. It's called Soft uh, Graphite. It was the most, of, that's my least favorite thing. Because you can't feel it on the page. It's like, the way I described it, and it's exactly what it is. It's like if your finger is like frozen or numb, and you rub it on your skin, and you can't feel it on the tip of your finger. It sounds really uncomfortable. That's what it feels like. I it's like the that. worst thing in the world. It was terrible. Moving on. Uh, favorite time of day? Um, I have to say late at night, but before you get really tired. I'm going to go with 1.30 a.m. I have this whole thing about 2 a.m. 2 a.m. is like the worst time of the night because it's that point at which if you haven't slept yet, your brain starts to flip over and yeah. run into overtime and you just start to sweat and your feet get all soupy and you start to get a little twitchy. And then your eyes kind of like do that like can't focus thing. I'd say it's a little later for me by about an hour, but 1.30 is still pretty prime. I like 1.30. Not tonight I don't like 1.30. No, 1.30 is not, it's not, it's only 12 right now. I'm going to get to sleep at 1.30. Well, I'm going to probably be walking home after the show. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's a pretty good time of day though, like 1, 1.30. I actually really like that time of day. 1.30 a.m. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, and continuing on with the, uh, you know, time thing, uh, we're going to go with favorite day of the year, specifically. How many you? I think my favorite day of the year is probably, I'm going to go with July 21st. Dude, that's good. That's like... Got a lot of nostalgia attacks here, you know? You get out of school on like the 16th of July. Yeah. You're a kid. Yep. And then it's like it takes a couple days for you to like realize that it's summer. And then you don't put shoes on for two and a half months. Oh man, that's the bomb. July 21st, my favorite day of the year. No, 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 no question about it. Uh, yeah, I can't really argue with that. I mean, I was going to keep it simple. You know, it might sound like a cliche, but Christmas, man. Christmas is pretty good. It's awesome. No, Christmas Christmas is pretty good. But, uh... Anyway, I get to... I mean, it's like, the great thing about Christmas is it's been different... It's been awesome in different ways as I've gotten older. Like, there was this, you know, <laughs> being a little kid and having Christmas as a kid was always really cool. But then, like, my brother moved away, but he was always home for Christmas, so, like, that was cool. Yeah. And, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Values, 
developed, you know? It yeah. almost adapts to your, you know, um, status. Point in your life. Yeah. It does. I know what you're saying. Uh, favorite two days, the equinox is equinoxi. Equini? Equini. The tumnal mm -hmm. and vernal equini. Equinox. Equi oh, that's it. I think equinox. equinox. Well done. Uh, yeah. Okay, well done. Uh, best soft serve you've ever had. Right. This, this one's hard. No, wait, no, it's not. Never mind. Magoo's. It's on the South Shore. What the hell town is it in? I don't know. Um, it sounds awesome, though. Yeah, it's just places. It's in Abington or something. It's uh, maybe about 30 miles south of the city. And it's one of those little shacks. And it's got mini golf at it. Hmm. And they've got not flavors, but like syrups that they'll yeah. put in flavor. But it ends up as good as a regular flavor. And they've got like 40 of them. 40 different kinds of soft serve or something absurd like wow. that. That's a lot. That's a little much for me. But my favorite soft serve is actually also at a tiny little sting at a mini golf place. It's in Lake George, New York. Uh oh, Brian's getting a text message. It's in Lake George, New York, north of Saratoga Springs, on the lake, on the south shore of the lake. I went there. Uh, sorry, keep going. I went to. Oh, she watching? Yeah, yeah. She just let me know it's in the rock. Goose is in the rock one. That's uh, my girlfriend. I used to go to Lake George with my girlfriend and her family two times. I went with them, and we would always go to the soft serve place. They had the best soft serve I've ever had. It was like the soft serve that was fat. You know, it didn't come out like a like a star shape. It came out like a round shape, and it was like mean and fat, like a like a fat little like a fertility goddess doll. You know? Oh my god! And then we played mini golf, and it was awesome. Okay, moving on. Uh, best state in the United States. Continental. Best state in the continental United States. What's, what do you have against? I don't have anything against. I don't have anything against Alaska or Hawaii. It's but they're, they're extremes. You know, choosing those would be like choosing the equinox. Yeah, the equinox. Yeah. You can't choose the equinox as your favorite days. The first one is two of them. Yeah, it's, two, it's like double the whatever. Whatever. Best state in the United States. I don't think you know all this thought about this one. I didn't. You know, I really didn't think about this. I've been to a lot of states. I've been to quite a few states. I've been to nearly half of the states. I gotta go to Colorado. I've never been to Colorado. I've never been to Colorado. Colorado is dope. Is it? Yeah. Why do you want to see Colorado? Ever since I saw Dumb and Dumber. No, I'm kidding. Obviously. No. Uh, yes, James, we're live. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I think my, the best state in the United States for me um, is probably Florida. Florida? Freedom Sam says, we won Florida, we can win the presidency. No, Florida is absolutely not the best state in the country. Florida sucks. Florida sucks. Florida, no there. offense to any of those people from Florida. Miami's like, a nice place. Tim Rush, for example. <laughs> like Tim Rush. I'm guessing he's the one who said that. I'll give Miami a nice place. Uh, I'll give Miami a nice uh, a shout out because Miami's not that. But Florida is a pit. It is a, it's a pit. It's just a pit. Anyway, uh, my favorite state, the best state in the United States. God, this is really hard. This is really difficult. Well, here for, I know. It was. They're all my questions. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to go with California. I'm going to have to go with California. It's almost like cheating. There's so much of it. I know. There's so much of it. I was born there. It's got awesome cities. It's got forests. It's got some of the oldest trees on the planet. Biggest living thing on the planet. Biggest living thing on the planet. Named after a distant <coughs> uncle of mine. Oh, really? Mr. Daniel Sherman. Yes. All right, moving on. Oh, uh, number 10. Favorite Christmas present ever. Um... Huh. Hmm. Huh. Uh, you know, here's the funny thing. I think I might go with when my parents got me a full string guitar. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Cool. Washburn <clears throat> a couple years ago. But the thing was, it's, it's kind of weird that I was actually going to buy that guitar off my friend. And then my dad was like, the hell with that. And like intercepted. And yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Which nice. I guess is good. Because it was like, it was like <clears throat> the guitar I was already going to get. 
So that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. And $150. Oh, that's sweet. I was going to spend on it. And I used I use that thing more than more than any instrument I've ever owned. That's, that. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, wow. We have 12 viewers. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, my favorite. And they're all the same shit. I know. They're all actually really. Uh, <laughs> the best Christmas present I've ever gotten <clears throat> is probably going to be. Mm. Shoot. Uh, I don't remember half the presents I got when I was in California. You know what? I think the best present I ever got to three years ago or something, I got a poncho. Hold on, Freedom Sam. We're going to get to it in five minutes. Uh, I got, oh, Freedom Sam. Cool. Yeah. We'll get there, buddy. <laughs> cool. We'll get there. Uh, we'll get there. I got a poncho. I got a pack of wool poncho from Peru. My mom got me a alpaca wool poncho from Peru yeah. with a carved wooden button that has a hood. And it's the best thing ever. It's so warm. Sometimes I take off all my clothes and I'm naked. I put that on and I sleep like that. It's gross. It's not gross at all. It's beautiful. <laughs> this is what I don't you know. We already well, did that one. Um, yeah, but I think we could get lost in talking about we, 90s. We could actually... Absolutely. So right. that's when we realized we had that another half an hour to fill up and we needed to do it. We'll come back to that. Yeah, well, actually, 40 minutes. This cat wants us to talk about the elections coming up. <coughs> and, um, well, I'm curious. George is new. Ooh. Okay, uh, yeah, so Freedom Sam. We desperately hope, I desperately hope that you go to school here. Because I get a kick out of that. Um, Mitt Romney for president. Um, here's the weird thing, um, I used to really, really hate, just as a rule, re Republican candidates, and then I started to begin to hate, as a rule, all candidates, yeah. um, and the weird thing about Mitt Romney now is that I'm actually kind of, as far as the Republican elections go, rooting for him, simply on the fact that he's the only Republican candidate who isn't actually yeah. insane person. He's got two really good things going for him. One, he is not evil. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Not as evil as, say, Newt Gingrich. And two, he is a great politician. Yeah, well, he's he is an amazing politician. He is a politician. And here's the weird thing. Your choices for uh, a lot of these candidates um, on the Republican side are broken down just to, like, friggin' messed out yayas. And now, this isn't saying anything about Mitt Romney in particular, but when you have the choice, like, well, let's pick the person who's a politician, period. Yeah. And that's, like, your best choice. Um, you know that uh, the elections are getting pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Obama. Let's just talk about President Obama for a second. <clears throat> He's a great guy. He has his heart absolutely in the right place. He is trying pretty hard to be the best president that he can be. Well, I think he was at one point, and, um... But, now... Well, you reach a point where you're just like, what the hell? I, there was a, um, a climate change conference that... I wish I could give you the proper facts in this, but pretty much he, uh... These, um... Activists, environmental activists, were coming to him and saying, Hey, oh, sweet, uh, uh, and saying, these are the changes you want made with the environmental policy and this and that, and Obama finally came out and said, in so many words to them, I can't do any of this, yeah. even if I wanted to. The system is broken, and it, we're relying on people to make these changes. Politics can't do it. Yeah. Um, but and that's a smart thing to say, because it's absolutely true. And that is why <laughs> I am voting for Vermin Supreme in every election for the rest of my life, as long as he runs. He's been running since 1988. So, um, if you guys don't know Roman Supreme, he's uh, an anarchist, he's an activist, and he's uh, run for president every year since 1988. He wears a boot on his head. Um, his platform is built off of uh, getting a free pony for every American. And um, uh, one of his big policies is, is um, dental hygiene. Uh, He's the man. He's gotten 
up to 140 votes in previous elections. 140? Yeah. That's like half the electoral college. Yep. Um, and he lived in Boston now. And he was involved with Occupy Boston, so I sympathize him with him there. Can we just take a quick look at the at the uh, comments we're receiving? Ha 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 ha. LOL. WPW from Zia. I don't know what that means. Curious George says, Durr. Vendetta234 swears a lot. Freedom Sam likes boobs that point upwards. <laughs> and oh my god, those are boobs! And Curious George, <laughs> Curious George says, Every yo's sick. That's cool. And then, uh, oh, thank you to Curious George. You're, oh, everyone is sick. Yes, warm water with lemon juice and raw wine. They, that's actually very good. Advice. Thank you. Yeah, it will be gone. I like to add uh, some ginger to that. And a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of cayenne pepper because that clears up the sinus. And actually, uh, garlic works really well, but only if you're like just getting sick. If you're already there, it's not going to no, help. No, it, it works even if it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I like to do? Okay, here's what I do. Um, when I'm like really sick and I just can't stay anymore, I'll take the garlic, I'll get, get like a full head of garlic and mince it up. And I'll put that in uh, like a strainer. I'll, like I'll put that in like a tea strainer. And I'll pour into it honey and lemon juice. So it's like just a thing of honey and lemon juice and garlic. I'll let that sit overnight. And I'll take the garlic out of it with the tea strainer. And then I'll add a little bit of hot water so I can make it thinner. And then I'll just take the shot. Yeah. And that's just like a kick in the fucking balls. And a kick in the just, balls of your illness. A kick in the balls of your illness. Does Syrup Vodka sponsor this? Who is me? See you shut it. It boosts the immune system. Lol, yes they do. Who's freedom? Lol, yeah, but... I love you guys. Stop playing it, man, son. It's not their show. It's our show. I love you guys. <laughs> uh, anyway, oh, we love you. And you're beautiful, people of TV land. <laughs> so, back to politics. Very wibbly wobbly. So, um, this election day, I'll be standing out in front of my old high school with a large sign, and I'll say, among, I'll be amongst all the people holding signs for their candidates, as if that's going to make any difference is if people are driving to the, like, election place and they're walking up and they're like, I don't know what to do. Like, who's got more signs? You, you win. I don't think anyone does that. But I'm going to hang out there with a sign that just says, don't vote. Politics is broken. And um, theory being that uh, we've seen recently, people have told you your whole life, voting is your, your greatest voice in the government. Or in politics, you know? Voting is your number one voice. And, um, you know, there hasn't been an election in four years, but uh, the internet um, protests and SOPA, you know, the internet at large, the internet community, and we, uh, you know, the people spoke, and that legislation got dropped. There was a, a protest at Tar Sands that I was at um, with a bunch of other people. To, uh, some 10,000 people, it must have been, protesting the... Um, oil pipeline being built down to America um, from the hydrofracking going on in Canada. Yeah. Obama dropped that. So that is your voice. Yeah. Voting is a very, very small voice. Um, See, you know, it's, it's good and it's bad because, you know, people say we live in a democracy, but that's actually not true. We live in a republic. We vote for people to represent our voice in, le in, in different types of legislation. So... You know, the, the, Brian is absolutely right in saying that the way to make your voice heard is literally to use your voice. Not to talk to your congressman. Not to vote. I mean, you know what? Talk to your congressman and vote. It's not a bad idea. I, you should totally vote. Because not just the presidential election is important. There's so much other stuff on your local ballot, on the state ballot, that's really important that you care about. Laws that will affect you directly. It's not all about the president. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah. It's politics in a nutshell. Yeah, that's as far as I go with politics. I start getting pissed off. Yeah. After um, I can't I can't go much further than that. I'm gonna I'm gonna get something or someone. <coughs> Don't hate me. Um. <clears throat> so we were thinking about what kind of. Uh, so, th th this SMFA TV is running off a computer that really sucks right now. 
We apologize. We apologize. It's not anybody's fault. It's just, well, it's, did we turn off the master volume? How do we sound, by the way? Do we sound, let us know if we sound okay, guys. Do we sound okay? Then I get back to it. Yeah. Uh, in any case, we're running off a computer that totally sucks. Nobody's fault. Person in charge, Sam White's looking for a better one. Um, we're going to get better sound, hopefully, very soon. Yes, we sound okay. Thank you, Zia. Uh, we're hopefully going to get better sound soon. But in any case, once we have the computer with a better processor, we're hopefully going to be able to use this gorgeous <coughs> semi space filling green screen. And we're wondering what kind of scene we should put back there during the show. You are loyal viewers, Ken voice your opinion on that. Brian suggested a nice night scene, like you see on most late night talk shows. Uh, like you see on most late night talk shows. My favorite example is, uh, hang on, let me see if it's fun. Uh, is it Rosie O'Donnell? Is that what I'm thinking? Of? No, I can't be Rosie O'Donnell. Someone had a really good <laughs> background. No, it wasn't Rosie O'Donnell. In any case, late night, like a, a nighttime background, nighttime city background. Be or something nice. really absurd, like like the inside of a uterus that someone snaked the camera out. Yeah, that would be good too. That would be good. Or uh, a loop of, you know that, um, you remember that David O'Reilly animation, the computer generated one where the kid gets slapped by his dad and he's playing the piano? No, it's one part of it where it makes fun of it. it. It's just a bunch of like computer generated scenes. It's all, it's all CG. There's a bunch of different scenes, and one of them he's making fun of uh, like Japanese uh, cartoon animals, and the teddy bear or whatever it is, just just going at it on the frog, just 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 really going at it on the frog. We just have a loop of that. It's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Curious George is is uh, becoming a fan of. Um, Bourbon Supreme, or Oriol already was. I just found out about this guy. He's awesome. Look him up. Yeah, look him up. Um, the other thing that's going on up here is programming. There's some great stuff. Um, I've watched a couple of shows. Yeah. They're informative and entertaining, but um, there's a lot of empty space. Um, yeah. Today, we actually came up a few hours ago when we turned the computer on. It's locked inside this file cabinet, and we got James, who should be online right now, to, to reach in up to about his shoulder with us prying the thing open and at risk of, of us letting go and just ripping his arm straight off. Slicing his arm off and reach way behind and turn the computer on so we can play a loop of like a six second flash animation that I made. You know what, let's, let's like actually show them that right now. Uh, yeah, okay, here, you, uh, let me get it off the flash drive so it's not one of this. Yeah, 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 okay, so anyway, um, so yeah, there's tons of great programming, but there's also lots of empty space. <clears throat> so we have, Thursday seems to be very popular. Uh, there's a couple of new shows. Tim and Amari Get Jobs is still on there. Hopefully they'll actually have a show this week. It's Hopefully they'll have, have a job, job, too. Hopefully they'll have jobs, too. Uh, Niall Woods. How about that one? Uh, I think DHT Cult Speaks On. I don't know what that exactly is. Esten Somer. Is that what that says? In Spider Spiders? That sounds awesome. <clears throat> In any case, uh, there's lots of great programming, but there's also lots of empty space. So, it's encouraged for all of you to come up here, you can plug in your USB drive. Plug in your USB drive. There's a little cable here. There's a little cable right there. there. And uh, you can play anything you want to on here. It's not like copyrighted, obviously, by things that you don't own. But that's a really good You should never do illegal things to this. It's just bad. It's just wrong. Follow the law. Follow the... <coughs> oh, hold on. Is this ready? No. Okay. It's being dead. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah it, it is. Come in now. Oh, wait, not yet. Parts the screen for so this is a little clip. This is an animation by Brian. We don't know how it's going to run because it's really big. It, it's okay. No, just command F. That's full screen. Yeah. Control F. Sorry. Uh, so we're going to play this clip for you just so you can see it real quick. It looks pretty nice. It's a little, it's a little, it's a little glitchy. But, uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Anyway, 
So things like this. This is a perfect example of, of what you can come and play for four hours. For four hours. Like straight. we did today. Just this loop over and over. Speaking of loops and animation, uh -huh. for all you animators out there, or even those people that aren't really doing a little, little shameless uh, advertisement there. Hey, it's not just us. There's lots of people involved in the show. <laughs> anyway, uh, for all of you who are animators or not animators, but know how to make a quick animation. Basically, Brian and I, on behalf of the animation department, are putting on an installation show uh, at some point later in the semester, which is hopefully going to be totally awesome, of cycles and loops. The plan is making pile of televisions um, and various <clears throat> playing apparatuses, plugged into them and just playing loops. And we're talking like just a few frames, just something yeah, going. Anywhere from between two <clears throat> frames and 30 seconds. Loops. So if you want to do that, you should tell us, because we'll totally put it in the show, and it'll just make everything more awesome. It can be in color, it can be black and white, it can be digital, it can be hand-drawn, it can be sound or silent. It can be pixelated. I don't even care. Loops. Uh, okay. I don't have anything to do with animation. In any case, uh, hey, I think it's Amari. Oh. Well, then Amari, I'm proud of you. Um, Tim and Amari get jobs. Yeah, Amari of Tim and Amari get jobs. Sorry, I forgot the name of the other person on the show. Bill Tim. Know. Is that Tim as in Tim Rush, Tim? Yeah. Wow, man. These guys are our favorites. They actually wanted to give you a little verbal preview of the show. Uh, last week I was sitting in the atrium and they come up to me and this girl Monica is holding a camera and they sit on either side of me. I'm just talking to somebody. I'm talking to Lauren what's her face. And uh, they come up and sit on either side of me and start talking to me about nothing. And then Tim starts trying to kiss me. And apparently the sequence was called like who can break the crack in the fastest. <laughs> Did it work? Yeah! I'd let Tim Rush kiss, kiss me. It was, it was hilarious. We actually had a discussion about this today. I don't know if you remember this. We got kind of hot and heavy for a while there. Yeah, did you? Yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, Let's but, play a little music for that. Let's just, let's just take a brief, brief little auditory break. We should do that for a whole show sometime. We should. We should. We'll do that. We'll do that one week. Uh, anyway. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. there's a delay, so I can look for a couple seconds into our past over here. We're at 1234. A long way to go, man. Brian's going to do something. Uh, I don't know what. Nothing too exciting. Nothing too exciting. Oh, you're putting up the Tom Clancy plan? I'll figure it out Tom Clancy. We'll just add, we'll just, let's just add him as a guest. Yeah. Let's just interview Tom Clancy. Today's guest is Tom Clancy. Today's guest is Tom Clancy. Hey, Tom, what's up? <laughs> Hilarious, man. That's killer. Nice sunglasses. Those are some nice sunglasses. Did you get them from Sunglasses Hut? Do you have the Sunglasses Hut credit card? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I'm moved. So, Tom, how's your new book coming? Oh, you're starting tomorrow and finishing on Wednesday? <laughs> wow, that's great. That's really, really It's good to see you're that. still working. Yeah, so I'm, it's, it's, it's really nice. A man of your age can still have such an effect on the culture he lives in. That's that's really nice. Yes. You're not, you haven't become obsolete at all yet, buddy. <laughs> yeah, Tom Clancy, everybody. Well done. Thanks, Tom. So anyway, uh, oh, ticket. Aaron Hughes on December 1st. Oh, wow. So this is the part of the show when we start just making shit up. Because we don't know what to talk about And anymore. you know what? The thing is, this we are at an art school. 
So we should be talking about art and stuff. Let's talk about art groups. So I'm going to start, um, we're going to have a new segment, a new weekly segment. Cool. That's right. called Art and Stuff. Art and Stuff. Art. This is our new segment. Hold on. Art, art, oh, too close. Sorry. Art and Stuff. Art and Stuff. Art and Stuff. So, uh, what are you working on right now, right? Me personally? Yeah, what are you working I'm on? working on an animation. It's called Moon Brain Radio Control. It's pretty sweet. It's about scientists who create a being out of other dead beings, a Frankensteinian being, Frankenstein, and force him to surf the internet where he becomes increasingly paranoid reading conspiracy theories and eventually loses his mind. Um, I, one of my major influences was a film. <coughs> A, uh, a movie called Tribulation 99. And if you guys can get your hands on this movie, it's awesome. I gotta watch that. Oh, uh, it's awesome. It's uh, made entirely out of found footage, um, with just a narrator over it. Um, and a lot of it is recognizable. You get stuff from James Bond, Godzilla, and Creature from the Black Lagoon, and things like that. And a lot of it's really obscure newsreel footage. Um, I'm pretty sure there are conversations going on. It's not so much a conversation as Curious George is singing the Pokemon theme song. Oh, okay. He also um, has stated that Pokemon is art, and I agree. If by art you mean an animation, then yes, it is an art form. It's true. It is an art form. Mm -hmm. uh, other art and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you working on? I'm actually also working on an animation right now. It's a stop motion oh, piece cool. about a fetus. Uh, I made the first. I finished the first fetus today. Well, mostly finished the first piece today. I could paint space on. But it is a creepy, creepy, creepy thing. I agree. The fetus is creepy. It's very, very strange. I was. It, it's it, the weirdest part about it was this afternoon when I was holding it like a fish that I had caught. I was holding it by the umbilical cord. And I had this paint with pink uh, liquid latex on it. And I was just slapping it on its butt and on the back of its legs, trying to get it in the creases and stuff like that. It was a weird day, just because of that right there. So I can only imagine how I'm going to feel in April when I'm finished shooting all this. Or in March when I finish shooting all this and I want to cry. Curl up in a ball and just sleep for just hide it for some. Um, do you have words the Pokemon theme song? They're asking. I know sing. most of them. I'm not going to sing that song. Maybe uh, some other time. I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. To catch them is my real. To train them is my cause. I've been searching far and what that's not. I don't remember. Uh, that's that's all I need. That's all I need. So yeah, gotta catch them all. Chaperonized. The curious. We tried, dude. Teach me love. Teach you the love. Gotta catch them. Gotta catch them. Oh, I will try to find the way. Searching far and wide. Uh, help us out, curious. Okay, whatever. Okay. Um, right. Right. I'm glad that we're, we're uh, you know, okay, sticking with the art and stuff. Yeah, art and stuff. Um, cool thing about the art world right now that I'm seeing at school is that people are starting to realize that the gallery scene, old school art, you know, the way it's presented and sold and the people who are seeing it and the people who are buying it, people are starting to realize that that's a giant fucking jerk off. Yeah. And um <laughs> and people are done with it. And art is moving towards things like the internet. Yeah. And open media and open information. This uh kind of uh the sense of ownership is changing a lot, um and the market's changing a lot. And the audience is changing a lot. The audience is becoming um less widening. Yeah. Um, and uh it's really exciting. So it's good to be part of this show, which, as goofy as this is, um, to be able to just instigate people um, talking. 
Yeah, uh, just start a conversation. Just, just, just information. Community practices. Whether it's useful information or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't information matter. is flowing, and information wants to be free. Yeah. Right? That's what soap is all about. Kick that shit in the ball. I dropped my cough there. Do you want one? I'm good. I'm good. Work on the lap. I like to chew. Just kick my shit out of it. I know. I'm a blast. I just love the way it is. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say? Um, uh, hey, who wants to see Sam balance a shovel on his face? Oh, who wants to see me balance a shovel on my face? Can we do, do we have room for that? I don't know. Let's find out. I'm gonna battle the shovel on my face. Tell me if you can see it. Um, can you crouch and do it? I don't know. I, here, I'll try to do it on my knees. It's not. It's not gonna work. Okay, real shovel. Shovel. Face. A spot for you. It's not gonna work because it can't. It can't. You can move it. Yeah. There. Hold on a second. Are you good? I'm gonna tip this whole ring right out. It's not gonna work, dude. It's gonna work. You're gonna break it all. No, no. It's, it's gonna be good. No, 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 it's a terrible idea. Okay, <laughs> it's no. working. I'm doing it. Is it better? Yeah, go for it. Hang on. Woo! Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am the pimp kid. <laughs> 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 you yeah. can't see that on late night. No, you can't. Yeah. No. I, I just chewed this cop up. Oh, I got man. excited. <laughs> uh, anyway, stupid human tricks. More like awesome Sam tricks. Um, moving on. Our next topic in discussion. Um, things that are purple. What do you, okay, things that are purple. Well, you said that just as so I was picking up this pen. That's crazy. This pen's purplish. That pen is blue. That pen is straight some, up blue. So navy purple. Oh, yeah, okay. I can, I can, that, that right there is purple. That's purple. Who else is purple? Garnier is purple. Um, and, uh, Grimace is purple. Grapes are purple. Grapes are purple. Grapes are purple. I like green grapes, though. Was there a purple Muppet? No, it wasn't. Uh, what's the dude's name from Sesame Street? It's purple. He's got the orange nose. Oh, yeah. That guy. Uh, uh, some other things are purple, too. Eggplant. I like eggplant. How do you like your eggplant cooked? Oh, fried, fried. Yeah. Oh, man. I love fried stuff. I was saying about onion rings earlier today. Then we went to be good up on that. Now I got two burgers and some fries. Holy crap, I ate them. Crap out of this. Yeah, that's a crap twist. So um, nice. You can do the same thing with porn and mushrooms. Telly! Telly! Thank you, Curious George. It's Telly. Uh, um, pimp robes are purple. Okay. Uh, what else? I don't know. Amari, that's inappropriate. Uh, cop suits. Um, oh, man. Don't talk about cop suits right now. I want to get home to my NyQuil so oh, bad. Oh, my God. So I bad. bad to take NyQuil. I'm going to take the night ball. Here we go, guys. Here's a glimpse into my personal life. You'll see how much you really love me. I'm going to go home. I'm going to put my PJs on. I might take a little shower, but probably not. Then I'm going to get into bed, down some NyQuil with some Egyptian licorice yogi tea, watch an episode of The West Wing, and pass out. That's fairly similar to my, my plan. Yeah. Oh, God. It's going to be good. I'm so excited. <coughs> I wish I had my humidifier. My humidifier broke. I need a new one. I want one that looks like a dragon and the stupid <laughs> nose. That's mad. You can get that on Amazon. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, uh, hey, speaking of Amazon, why is everything that they say is going to take like four days to get there take like a month to get there? I don't know what you're talking about, dude. I ordered something that was five to seven days shipping, and it, well, supposedly got here today. I haven't seen it yet, but supposedly got here today. So no, that's not super fast. I'm still waiting for my shit. I got books. I got to read the stuff. It's not working. Also, if, if here's a little tip for you students, if you didn't already know this. If you're a student and you haven't already done so, you can go to Amazon.com, go to their student page, and get a free year of Amazon Prime 
Are you kidding me? Which is free two-day shipping on anything that's eligible. Which is most stuff. Yeah, I did that for a year, and then a year later, it costs like 80 bucks. And then, uh, a month, I haven't done it yet, but a month before my subscription ran out, they were like, hey, we love you so much that we're going to bump the price down to 60 bucks for you. It's so you, you only have to pay 60 bucks a year instead of 80 bucks. Mm. I'm going to do that. You know what I'm doing with my, with my books, because I've had to go up to Tops for the first time and ugh, buy books, and I couldn't rent them because I don't have a credit card. I don't have a debt card. Yeah. They're just stupid. So it was like 130 bucks for all the books for these two two classes, 130 bucks. I was like, hell with that. So I'm going to find people, as long as the same reading material are required next semester, I'm going to find someone who's taking that class, and I'm going to give them to them for free. Nice. And I'm going to say to the dude, you, I'm only doing this if you give them to someone next semester. To Bookshare, man. I love Bookshares. Bookshare. Yeah. Bookshare is the best thing. One of, my favorite, one of my favorite things to do is when I finished a book that I really thought was really, really good, I take a Sharpie and I write on the cover of it, share this book, and then I leave it on the train. That's so cool. I'm done with a ton of books. What were we saying about free information? What well, doesn't happen yeah. on the internet? Yeah. What's up? Analog. Mm -hmm. Type. WordPress. Paperbacks. Change the world. Mm -hmm. I love the way paperbacks smell. Who else loves that smell? Who doesn't like that smell? It's like the best smell of the world. That cut grass and new mm -hmm. fresh Pokemon cards. Yeah. Fresh Pokemon cards. Yeah. Wow. I haven't smelled that in a really long time, but for some reason I don't remember. Lord yeah. of the Rings is better. Yeah. Which is better? Yeah, what kind of question? That's a yes, yes or no answer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Lord of the Rings is infinitely better. My dad read me Lord of the Rings when I was in kindergarten, like a bedtime story. Nice. So it's not even like a book in my mind, it's like a fairy tale. It's it, like, it is, it is, it is, it is a fairy tale. tale. Oh my god. I, I, uh, I read them when I was like 10. And then again when I was like 17. You read The Silmarillion. You know, I've started The Silmarillion like 10 times. It's some heavy shit. I know. You gotta like have your game on to read that book. Yeah. But I, I, th I think it's totally worth it. Um, um, have you read My Immortal? No, I have not. I have uh, not this is some book. famous Harry Potter fan fiction that my oh, girlfriend, I read a part of mine. My I, girlfriend read the entire thing to me over winter break. That's ridiculous. Hang on, let me, let me clarify. I haven't read my immortal. Someone made me watch an anime, like, like, uh, like a found screenshot anime version of it. So it was like screenshots from all different anime characters, all these different characters talking to each other, someone reading the script of yeah. my immortal. I watched about two minutes of that, and my eyes blank. And I, then your, your heart stopped, and you, you had to be revived. Um, dude, people have done all kinds of stuff. There's a play of it. I really want to make a movie of it. People have, if you guys don't know what My Immortal is, it's, um, it was uh, posted on a number of uh, fan fiction sites. It's, it's Harry Potter fan fiction, but like very loosely. Like probably by someone who never really read Harry Potter. Um, it's god awful, but like just awesome. And uh, uh, um, it's a, it, it, it kept getting taken down from fan fiction sites because it was so bad and people kept reposting it because it was so good. People would literally download it and save it. And then um, eventually someone published it in a hard copy and that exists out there somewhere. Remember we were talking about free information. Yeah. Again, always comes back to it. This is like the overtone of my entire life. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Keep going back to art and stuff. Yeah. Free yeah. All right. It's fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's, um, so it's just really cool that you know people put shit out there and then it gets published in the book and stolen from the original author, but she was a fucking psycho, so who cares? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. In any case. Uh, who was that? Amari? Read My Immortal. Yeah, read My Immortal. Amari, if, if, you, if you want to ask a question, what's better, Lord of the Ranks or Harry Potter, My Immortal. My Immortal. Yeah, yeah. Very much good. Uh, apparently My Immortal will heal us. I don't know if that means that 
Is that like keel hauling? Is that like we're going to be tied to That's, the keel? I, I got to imagine that it's short for keel haul. Yeah, it's got to be short for keel it's just bad punching, bad barn poles. I know. I just can't imagine that's clutter. I mean, that's a really heavy threat. You drown really quickly if your neck isn't broken by the force of the water. In any case, um, oh my god, it's 1251. Let's talk about 90s cartoons real quick. 90s cartoons. <clears throat> Johnny Quest. Johnny Quest was a 60s cartoon. Okay, but the 90s version. Oh, the 90s version, I forgot about that. Well, they introduced a girl. Because it was yeah. not politically correct, there was not a, one female in the entire cast. Yeah. You could get away with that in the sixties. Yeah. Honestly, I wish you could get away with it now. Because like, who are they kidding? Like, there was a lot of girls who were like watching Johnny Quest and like, I need a female role model. I mean, maybe there were some. I'm sure there were some. Yeah. Also, maybe, it's an awesome show. I'm sure it just needed to draw because it made it better. Well, why did it have to be Race Band's daughter? There's no way Race Band would have tied down. Like it's true. It's, it was a, a, a it was an accident. You know, it's like a. It was like, a, this is your daughter with the, the milk pinned to her, her shirt. She's got a suitcase and 20 nuts. This is your daughter from, you know, you know, Loretta. And he was such a badass that, like, like he ignored her for a week. He, no, he kept her. Like, that would have been, like, like a, a, a chauvinistic douchey <laughs> thing to do. He would just be like, fuck this kid. But, like, he was even more... Like manly and I'm amazing, take that. care of that. He was like, out of this kid. Yeah, he like he was like, watch out, Jess, and like threw a barrel at her, and she punched it out of the air. <laughs> cool and then, like, um, so you got to do, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, so so, so so Ray's band is the man. Dexter's laboratory. Um. Uh, Gimli Tchaikovsky's um first big project, I think. The first thing we had on Garth Miller, anyway. Yeah. Was awesome. Awesome. From day one, even from the first episode, um, the pilot was very consistent with the rest of the series, which didn't happen much back then. A lot of the time, the pilot would be um, someone would make the pilot, and then uh, another animator, director, or studio would take over the rest of the show. And usually, the person taking over the rest of the show was Gindy Tanikovsky. Like what happened with um, Powerpuff Girls? They were like, "You just you should take this." And it was awesome. And it was awesome. Power Girl is one of my favorite movies ever. Yo, yeah. What a good movie. We gotta watch that inside. We gotta watch it. Again. Yeah. Anyway, uh, our real monsters. Um, uh, the bad guy really, really creepy. Like in a major way. The principal. Yeah. Yeah, he was weird. Uh, he was pretty weird. Uncomfortable. What's um, his name? I don't remember. Gronk or something. I don't remember. Yeah, it was um, weird. Yeah. Um, cat dog. Cat dog. Have we discussed the cat we dog did. complex? Yeah, we discussed the cat dog complex. We had a conversation last week. Cat dog. Because here's the thing about cat dog. No one liked it, but everyone watched it. And everyone watched it because it was always on. It was always on because everyone watched it, so it got good ratings. So no one liked it. Everyone watched it. And it just created this horrible cycle where it was always cat dog. You guys so should just go back and watch it now. It's, it's a weird show. It's upsetting. A, it's a strange, like, you can, it's, it's not so bad, just so much as, like, this is uncomfortable. There was the dude with the two asses. <laughs> what was going on there? It was, it was a weird show. It was just a weird, 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 weird show. Don't cat dog. Why would the dog stupid and the cat was smart? Dogs are way smarter than cats. I didn't get that. I did like their house, though. Half a bone, half fish. That was yeah. pretty funny. I just want to know, like, who came up with that, like, cat and dog connected. I mean, it's like, push me, pull me. Push me, pull you. What's that? From Dr. Beagle. The two-headed lump. From uh, Dr. Beagle. Uh, okay. In Dr. Beagle, the two-headed lump. It's got two heads and one lump. Is this in the books? Or? Yeah, in the books. In the movie. Uh, anyway, more A's cartoons. Uh, X-Men Spider-Man. Um, no, it's two different cartoons. I'm, I, I don't know. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is more of an 80s cartoon. Yeah, you're right. But um, it went into the 90s, and dude, I was crazy about that show. Me and my brother, my dad just has told me stories, but like, the theme song would come on, and me and my brother would go into this, like, frenzy. Like, we started to, like, 
just like ripping around, <laughs> jumping around uncontrollably and like knocking shit over and like he just let us do it like because it was entertaining, I guess. That's awesome. Also, my girlfriend told me that um, and her brother and sister uh, were little, um, her mom caught them once and they were standing naked in the backyard calling each other green with magic markers because they wanted to be Ninja Turtles. Awesome! And I like, didn't watch She's off perfect for you. She was just all green. Perfect this green. wasn't her, this was her, her brother and sister. Oh, okay. Runs. She's got those jeans though. She does. Um, yeah. What about, uh, oh, did you ever watch the Man in Black cartoon? Yeah. It was good. Yeah, why? I like that show. I, it's weird, though, that every single friggin' movie that got made had a, in, in that, that period, in like the early 90s, got a TV show. Early to mid, mid to, actually, it was mid to, mid to late 90s. Awesome. It was Men in Black, Godzilla, uh, Jumanji. Jumanji. And it's like, it's not like Men in Black was like a kid's movie. Yeah. You know? It was like, PG-13, like there are some racy jokes in that and stuff, but they just, they do it up with anything. What are some other ones? Ghostbusters? Well, they remade Ghostbusters, they made the new yeah. Ghostbusters series. Uh, back to the Future, Beetlejuice, these are all raised. Yeah, yeah, we're going, we're going, we're going back further. But now. they're mid-90s. Now, they're mid-90s. Be- Beetlejuice was going up until the early 90s. It was, it was, it was mm-hmm. around that point, yeah. See, the weird thing is like, um, the channels all had, um, kind of, feels back then, like one of really, there were a lot of them were made from movies. Yeah. Or else they were really ridiculous because that's where Animaniacs and yeah. Big Zord and stuff was. Yeah. And then like there were then there were the really like I guess it would have been kind of a nineties equivalent of like the Hanna Barbera, like the really cheesy ones that were on like um USA and stuff. Like like Savage Dragon, yeah, Biker Savage Mice from Mars Dragon. and stuff. So that was the stuff that my brother was into. I was never into TV that much, but my brother was watching that that that, that jump. The uh, Seventh Dragon. Seventh Dragon was far out. And Street Sharks. Street. I remember Street Sharks. That was a weird show. The yeah. dino. What was the one with the dinosaurs? You were the one oh, with like the dinosaurs? the dinosaur muscle dude. Yes. Yeah. And then there was the one. Oh, the weirdest one. And I wish I could find this. I haven't been able to find it anywhere. With soccer players. You the soccer players. There was these, there was a during a soccer game, there was like an earthquake and like radioactive waves came out and mutated them. And what? They a mutant soccer league <laughs> and the, the games were like unbelievably violent and they'd like kick each other's arms off <laughs> and then they'd put them in these tubes and they'd throw their limbs back. It was so weird. Back the tanks. Uh, huh? Yeah. Yeah. They put them in back the tanks. No, this show is bizarre and I cannot. That's a, awesome. I haven't been able to track it down in years and years. I've been looking for it. But, um, yeah, USA, USA and on, like, before 11 o'clock on Saturday morning, that's where the crazy shit was going now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> and now we have crappy cartoons. There's some good stuff going on. Not really. We have a couple of good things going on. The cartoons are just not as good anymore. Now, what we have now is we have Adventure Time. We have... Ben 10, which is not a good show. Uh, Spongebob is not anymore. Spongebob is, I don't think it is on anymore. We have Ben 10, which is not very good. We have Generator X, which is the same as Ben 10. We have the regular show, which people like, but I really don't like it. I haven't seen it. I think it's dumb. I, I, I think it's hilarious. I, I, don't, I don't get it. it. It's something different, though. Whether you like it or not, I think it, it seems like it's, it's got a different vibe going on. Yeah. Rather than that, it's just over, way, overly fast-paced... Um, um, stuff going on because I didn't encourage yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it encourages short attention span. Um, you don't need any more these days. We're missing great shows like, well, you know what, Avatar and the Last Day Let's talk about Avatar. Have you watched Avatar and the Last Day Predator? I'm actually more familiar with the comics than you with the show. There are no comics. Yeah, there are. It's based on manga. No, it's not. It is. Well, manga. The manga is called uh, Avatar and the Last Day Dude, you're absolutely wrong. Fuck this shit up. You're Fuck absolutely wrong. No, it is. And it's, it's also like four years ahead of the thing, so I know what's going to happen. Tang keeps the update on it. Tang is the manga. Uh, He's Asian, so he knows. That's ridiculous. I don't believe it. In any case, my point is, Avatar Last Year, Legend of Korra is going to start probably in the 
summer probably. He's not giving anything? Created and produced by Michael DiMartino and Brian Quinsco. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna update you guys on this later. Right now it's one past one. In the morning. Is it one past one? Oh my god. It means our show is over. Oh, the show flies. is over. It's time to go home. It's time to pass out. It's time to take some NyQuil. Hell yes. And go to sleep. Look, we're at one hour and 15 seconds. Young racist. Ha ha ha. Dude, yes. we haven't looked over here in a couple minutes. Or, thing, this, this situation just gone off. This is really not good. Something, something. I think Zia... Imari and I'm assuming Curious George is Tim are really going at it. There's some there's some hateful shit being spewed. You guys should be nice to each other. Love is the best. Love is a battlefield. Love is a battlefield. How many people are watching? Uh, I think eight. Eight or eight? Five. Uh, we dropped to five. Yeah, it's time to go. Yeah. Alright. Good night, everybody. Um, tune in next week. Um, where our themes, no, we don't know what our theme is going to be. Bunny next week. It's going to be bunny. We're going to have a bunny themed show. Bunny themes. Um. Okay. okay. All right. Goodbye. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Press stop. You got to press stop. No, they can still hear us. No. Yeah. What the hell?